today's a happy day. We got more parts for the V10 M3. The parts are quite important for this build because without them I can't drive. It's gonna be the new flywheel and a clutch kit. Dude, you're gonna see this clutch kit here in a moment. And let me tell you, it is an absolute beautiful piece of art, in my opinion. The company that makes this flywheel and clutch kit, they're an OEM supplier for a very, very dope car brand that I unfortunately cannot mention because it's a disclosure and I'm not allowed to. But just know that they're very fast cars and they're very expensive to say the very least. As you can currently see on your screen, the flywheel and the clutch kit are absolutely stunning. In my opinion, they are definitely art. They are art, that's the least I could say about these. The build quality, the attention to detail is absolutely phenomenal, it's amazing, and that explains the price tag, yet I still got an amazing deal thanks to Matt with Connex. Guys, please check out Matt, hit the link in the description, and please make sure you tell him that I sent you there, because dude, you're not gonna regret it. He's got some cool stuff for your cars, I'm telling you. So as you can see here, we have a beautiful kit, dude. We have an absolutely beautiful kit from TTV Racing. You can see that right there. All these parts are manufactured and built in England. Look at this, all CNC machined. Just beautiful artwork, just absolutely stunning, man, truly. I am so stoked to put this on. I went with a twin disc setup. Why, you may ask? I'm keeping the horsepower stock in the V10 M3. Um, well, I just wanted to support my boy, also needed a flywheel, also needed a clutch kit for this. So again, Matt, shout out to you, thank you, and who knows? I mean, this is rated for about 850 horses. Later on, once I'm used to the factory 500 horsepower in this thing, I might just stroke this engine and make it about 700, so that's why I went with that kit. If you've been following this build for quite some time, you know that I have a manual transmission for this S85 V10. Originally, with the ECU, the engine did not come with a manual, it came with an SMG, so I was debating between going factory ECU, which I have, I bought it with the engine, or going standalone. As beautiful as a standalone idea sounds, and as easy as it would be, I have decided to go with the factory ECU. So at the moment, as I'm filming this video, my ECU is getting shipped back from California from a guy that I'll link his stuff below again. Appreciate you, bro. Seriously, he programmed the ECU for me to see that it's now a manual transmission. He actually coded the VIN of this chassis into the ECU, and he did a bunch of other stuff that I shouldn't have issues with. For example, deleting my cats from the ECU so it wouldn't really need them because I'm not gonna need them. <laughs> it's gonna be a race car, it's gonna be loud, it's gonna be good. With that being said, running a factory ECU is gonna be a little bit complicated in terms of making it work with the chassis harness of the M3, but we, I believe it's gonna be doable. It's very doable. I've, I've been in touch with a few people. We're gonna get it done. For the time being, however, let's pull the engine out of the car again, take the transmission off, put the flywheel on, put in the new pilot bearing, put in the new throttle bearing into the transmission, and install in this beautiful kit. Also, I'm running a steel pivot pin from Powerflex, because if you know BMWs, then you know that they all come with plastic pivot pins, and that is the dumbest design I have ever seen. Steel, copper, whatever you want, but thanks to Powerflex. Another beautiful thing about this kit is that it comes and bolts up directly to the E9X generation of M3s, right? It uses factory bolts for the flywheel, which by the way, have to be replaced every time you take the flywheel bolt off. This is a kit for the E9X M3, by the way, which I am mounting to the S85, which essentially is the exact same thing. I've heard of a couple rumors of guys saying that the factory S85 starter doesn't work with the factory E9X M3 flywheel, and then I've heard others where they just bolt on and do a manual swap and everything works just like that. So we're gonna find out today. Before we proceed with replacing the flywheel, we want to replace the pilot bearing. This one has about 70,000 miles on it. Last thing I want to do is come back to it. Oh, the tool's maxed out. Nice! Clean the sucker out. Put the new one in. The new one? I'm gonna put it in. And try to flatten it out as much as possible. Take a little socket that's about the same size as the race. Look at that. Metal on metal, baby. She's in there. Nice, we're good. 
And now while we're at it, um, I'm gonna replace the pivot pan. Got a steel one from PowerFlex. This OEM plastic one is a no-go. There it goes. Oh, that was much easier than expected. This little guy. Before we put the fork on, I'm gonna take some grease, some lithium grease, lube that sucker up, lube up the inside of the fork as well. There we go. All lubed up and good. Now we shall lube up this shaft right here. Here we go. Now we're gonna be installing the flywheel. These bolts are stretch bolts and they can only be used once. Put a little bit of blue Loctite on them. Red is too much, blue you still want it to be able to take it off, you know what I'm saying? So this is gonna be a T60 socket. So the way you put this flywheel on correctly, there's a little dowel on the actual crankshaft right there. Right now, the engine is at top dead center. It doesn't matter really, but this dowel is mainly for the crank sensor. And the way you put it on correctly is on the back of the flywheel, you'll see one of these holes right here is a little bit bigger than everything else. That's where the dowel goes. All these holes are equal size, except for that one. That one goes over the dowel, and that way, your engine is gonna be actually reading it off properly and it's gonna have an easier time starting. It's gonna have a proper time starting. Otherwise, if, if this was mismatched and this was not aligned with the dowel, then your crank sensor would be picking up wrong fault, you know, faulty codes and it would tell you that the engine's not starting up correctly. Try to keep it as clean as possible. This surface doesn't really matter how clean it is. We're gonna match it up with that dowel. Whenever you're ready, yeah. I am ready. <laughs> okay, so it's aligned. We can start torquing it down little by little. That way it evens out properly. We call it a day. These torque specs are 105 Newton meters. Don't go in a clockwise rotation. Go in a triangular rotation. That's the proper way to seat anything, really. Do that and be careful. You don't need a whole lot anyway. Now that all the bolts are kind of hand tightened right now, what I'm gonna do is take a regular wrench, not a torque wrench, and I'm just gonna go in a triangular pattern everywhere else, just kind of hand tighten it a little bit more than what you need to, and then go over it again to the proper torque specs. We've got our torque spec set to 105 Newton meters, ready to go. Starting now, baby. Double checky. Looks like they're all tight, but I'll just go over them again. There we go, baby. Before we proceed to put the clutch and the pressure plates on and everything, you want to dry clean this real well. Make sure all the grease is gone. Use some brake clean. Clean the sucker up, dude. To put on the clutch discs properly, first of all, you don't really want to touch the clutch packs. You don't want you don't want to get any sort of debris on them. Just as clean as possible. Pretty straightforward near engine, flywheel side. So this clutch disc is gonna go on the flywheel, just like that, followed by a plate, the flat one, the one that's flat on both sides, followed by a second clutch disc, which is also labeled. This side has to face the gearbox, so it's gonna be going on that away. Followed by the second plate, which has an indentation right here, which specifically goes into the pressure plate up into this little groove right here. So we're gonna put them all on at the same time, align it, before we tighten everything up, obviously, and call it a day. These plates, we're gonna clean them off with brake clean. Clutch discs, don't really worry about those, just try not to get them dirty. There goes the plate. Then we take the one that's facing the transmission side, new engine, see that's the wrong one, near gearbox. The label has to face the gearbox, which means it's gonna be going this way. This plate doesn't really matter which way it goes, it's the same on both sides. Take your second clutch disc, new engine, flywheel side, or near engine, why do I keep saying new? And what we're thinking with Daniel, since that clutch disc is going like this, we would assume that it's probably best for it to go the opposite direction like that, so, so they wouldn't be facing the exact same direction. Pick this sucker up. It'll probably move anyway. Put the pin through. Line that up. Now these, yeah, it's definitely got some weight to it, I'll tell you that. Okay, well that's being held on. In the meantime, obviously you want to put some blue Loctite on these six bolts that came with the kit. And after a few attempts, line them up as best as we can before tightening these six bolts. The teeth on the inside are lined up pretty damn straight, which is good. We're just going to risk it. We're going to tighten them up to spec and shove the transmission in. Hope that everything works out great. According to BMW TIS, 
The torque spec is 34 newton meters because we got the 10.9 mil bolts. 34 newton meters go in the same sort of direction that we did with the flywheel. These six bolts for the pressure plate are six mil. It's a six mil bit. Tighten them up in the same triangular rotation as we did with the flywheel. Do just by hand at first and then tighten them up to 34 newton meters. And while you're doing this, try to keep an eye out on the actual clutch plates because chances are they might get loose and you're gonna have to restart doing this again. And now we attempt to put the transmission on. It all looks real good in there. All these bolts are tightened up to 34 newton meters. We're good. Loctite's on. Should be easy, hopefully, right? We'll see. There we go. Yeah, dude. Clutch is in, baby. <laughs> and there you have it, boys. New clutch, twin disc is in. Maybe the first one ever on a V10, to be honest, because it is made for the E9X M3s, which this transmission is off of one of those. This is a V10, however. I'm pumped, I'm pumped to feel how it feels. I'm pumped to drive this thing, because dude, to be honest, this thing's gonna get started up real soon. We don't need a whole lot to make this thing fire up for the very first time. If you're unaware, I rebuilt the entire engine because it had five spun rod bearings when I initially got it. I've never heard this thing run. I've never seen it run prior to buying it. Didn't know it had five spun rod bearings, so we will see. Stick around for that, that's coming up real soon. I just need to make one fuel line, two fuel lines, a return and a feed. Gotta make adjustments to certain things, get some radiators, oil cooler, and this baby's about to fire up for the very first time. My ECU's coming in shortly. Should be good. Just like that, the clutch, the flywheel, everything's in. And nobody's ever gonna see it, except if you follow me on Instagram, which is right there, dude. <laughs> Do I need a clutch and flywheel that hold up to 850 horsepower? Not yet. Stick around. Peace. Thank you for watching.